Right, so I've decided to come back to this thing after doing a bit more research. <clears throat> it turns out it's not quite as simple as simply sticking voltages onto this thing. You can do, but I've read that it does damage them if exposed to DC for too long. If you put DC between any of these pins in a common, yeah, might have damaged this trying to test it. Which I'd be a bit upset about. Anyway, um, turns out that these two pins are com, are common, but are not common to each other. They seem to be only common to the pins on this side and the pins that are on this side. So that's com for all these pins, and that's com for all these pins. So I believe these to be pins one and forty. Yes, I've also read there should be like a bump on this side, and I can just feel the bump. So. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you a circuit uh, I've built up um, with the help of some information from a few friends on a few forums. And um, I'm going to see if I can get this thing to actually show up some segments. So I'll show you the circuit, then I'll show you how I'm going to plan to test it. So here's our circuit we're going to use to drive this LCD. Um, it looks complicated to start with, but it's not really that complicated. If you know your op-amp theory, then some of this is pretty elementary. Uh, I'll briefly describe it. I won't go into uh, all the theory. So, here we have um, an op-amp in a uh, buffer configuration. So, what it's doing, it's buffering exactly the half the supply voltage via these two 100k resistors. So potential divider, they're equal, you get 4.5 volts there which means you get 4.5 volts there. Now what this buffer is doing is providing a virtual earth for the rest of the circuit. If you don't know what virtual earth uh, can be used for, I'd buff up on your op amps. And what it's doing is lifting the ground, it's basically creating a, a false ground here so it's 4.5 volts above uh, actual uh, actual ground. This operation amplifier with these components around it is in uh, a oscillator configuration which is dictated by C1 and R6. Um, here then you would expect to see a square wave between 0 and 9 volts. <coughs> I know it looks like it says 9 minus 9 there but what I'm doing is just marking the top of that square wave anyway. So here you expect between 0 and the supply rail. And um, here we've this is, because it's been made in SPICE, this is essentially a, a potenti potential divider, a potentiometer rather. Uh, so you just imagine a pot here. But anyway, what this does is, because it's referenced to the virtual earth here, it changes the amplitude, peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, of the square wave about 4.5 volts. So instead of it going between, I'll use my fingers here, instead of it going between naught and 9 volts like that it actually goes changes equally between 4.5 volts like that and then finally we've got our output stage we've got uh, another buffer amp here and it takes whatever the signals there and buffers it exactly as it's shown and then we've got another amplifier here in inverting configuration with a gain of 1 minus RF over R in or in this case R2 over R1 and again, it's uh, spitting, it's taking uh, the signal there and inverting it. So essentially, it flips it 180 degrees out of phase. So you have two signals here, which uh, one is in phase with respect to there, and one is 180 degrees out of phase with respect to there. We just use out and n out to drive our LCD. So here it is built up on the breakboard. This is my potentiometer that controls the amplitude. Uh, of my output signal and then we've got our uh, non-inverted output and our inverted output here I'm using two 1 microfarad caps in series to create 470 nanofarad caps um, a 1k ohm resistor and we're using the uh, LT1014 which I had floating around in my parts box and we and there's a decoupling cap there and uh, what else Oh yeah, we're running off a 9-volt PP3 cell.
it's more than enough. This thing isn't going to put supply a lot of current. This is the good thing about LCDs, they're actually quite low power. So you don't need to shove a lot of current in them. So this PP3 cell should be able to manage this this test no problem. And then obviously I've got it hooked up uh, to my scope. There we are. It's working. I finally get to use it in anger. Yay! So if I turn on the power, I'll just roll this connector over. There we go. Whoops. There we go. So this is the output signal. Now this is our non inverted signal, and this is our inverted signal. Um, I've got these um, position in different uh, vertical positions on here. This is not how the signal looks coming out of here. It's also AC coupled, so essentially the not volts for this signal is around about there, and the not volts for this signal is around about there. So you're thinking, well, why do you need uh, equally and opposite opposed equal and opposite signals to drive an LCD? Well, I'll explain that next. So I found a useful little app note online supplied by Atmel. If you Google that number or that code there, you will get this application note. <clears throat> and it explains quite well how LCD technology works and how you should drive it. Basically, as I mentioned before, LCDs don't like DC in one, one uh, direction. You get something called electroporosity. Porosis, electroporosis, and it doesn't sound good. <laughs> uh, basically, sticking five volts on there and not volts on there to turn it on, you're basically throwing current in one direction, and eventually it starts to degrade the liquid crystal inside. I won't go into the physics behind how liquid crystals work, but I will explain how to drive them. So, as you say, as I say, if you constantly flow current around there, it's not going to like it, and the liquid in the liquid crystal element will eventually fade, fuzz, and eventually die. So how do we get in here current without degrading it? Now it's a clever trick. <clears throat> I'll explain it. It explains quite well down here. So we have two signals here in phase with each other. So when it's high, that's high. When it's low, it's low. And what you do, you apply the same signal to segment line zero and the com line. So that means the dif the difference, if that's at f if that's at five volts and that's at five volts, then our difference between the two signals is nothing. If this is at naught volts and this is at naught volts, then again, our difference between the two signals is nothing. So no current flows that way or that way when both signals are in phase. So what if you want the segment to light? Well, if you shift the phase of one of these signals, so say like we shift the phase of segment 1 to 180 degrees with reference to the signal applied to COM, then we get ground and VCC, so we'll call, uh, sorry, VLCD. So we'll call VLC 5 volts. So 5 volts minus 0 volts is, sorry, 0 volts minus 5 volts is minus 5 volts. Oh, we've got current flow going from the COM line into segment line 0. And then if we do 5 volts minus 0 volts, we get... 5 volts. So we've got current now flowing from the segment line into the com line. And then it just goes backwards and forwards. If you do this really fast, you hardly know that that's turned on. And I thought that was quite clever. So if we go back to the scope and look at my signals, if I superimpose one on top of the other, ta da! So when that one's on and that one's off, you still get. Four point f um, an eight volt nearly peak to peak difference. We're on um, two. Um, we're on two volts per division in the vertical. And again, when well, that one's high and that one's low, eight volts peak to peak, and repeat, repeat, repeat. So you are you are actually driving current through it, but you're driving it AC, um, AC. 
and this way it reduces the if uh, or stops the effect of electroporosis <laughs> I can't say it electrophorosis so yeah so with that theory in mind let's give it a blast see if we can get some of the segments to light up on that LCD so right I've got the um, circuit turned on I've got my com hooked up to the uh, inverted output and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to connect between these two pins here and here now going back to going back to our um, drawings kindly supplied by Atmel if you supply an antiphase signal here and the in-phase signal in here, essentially current's going to flow through this segment and then back through this segment. So, if you light up two segments, it means you've got two segment lines. If, however, you find a common line, if you only find you're lighting one segment, then you've probably got a common line and a segment line, because then current flows through one segment. So, using that theory in mind, if I hook up these two here, aha, we get two segments lit. Sorry, the light's a bit wrong, but um, there, look, we have two segments. Right, so which two are they? Let's go and have a look at the data sheet. So, um, the two pins we are interested in are F4 and FG, because they look like they're the ones we need lighting. <coughs> that are, sorry, they look like the ones that are lit. So F4 and FG, and that confirms our pinout as well. So F4 is pin 22, and FG is pin 23. <laughs> which are these two pins here. And sure enough, yep, F4 and FG. Winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So, if I can match the rest of them to this drawing, this pin out is this flipping display. Well, would you look at that. Bang on. Tested every single one. Right, so it wasn't a complete absolute failure after all. It works. And I learned something. I learned how LCDs are driven. Yeah, it works. And I learned something. Brilliant how to drive an LCD. Another string to the bow. Excellent. And there it is. Oh! Yeah, that's exactly how I felt when I first tried to turn this on. Oh! Doing it wrong. Right, well we're on one volt per division here, and this is the adjusted signal that we're looking at now. And it's about 1.2 and then 1.4, 2.6 volts peak to peak. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and comment. Thanks very much for watching folks. Take it easy.